Hey Suncrest, I miss you just a little bit this weekend because I don't get to listen to Coach Powell, but my in-laws are celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary and they took all of us to Hawaii to celebrate. That's why I'm missing you just a little bit. But I can't wait for you to listen to Coach Powell. He's got an incredible story where God has been at work in his life. He of course is getting ready to kick off his inaugural season as the men's basketball coach at Valpo. And I'm very grateful he was willing to come and speak to us just before the season kicked off. Um, he's someone who uh, the friendship that I'm building with has just led me to respect him more and more. So as his family joins us, as he joins us this weekend, would you give a warm Suncrest welcome to Coach Roger Powell? You know, the most important thing about me is that I'm, I'm broken and he put me back together. And, you know, my story is pretty cool. I got to experience a lot of things um, through basketball and I've gotten to speak a lot of different places, but, but the fact of the matter is I'm broken and I needed Jesus and he pulled me out of darkness into light. And that light now is being, I'm shining it. But after hearing my story, you know, you'll be able to see about what that light looks like and, and how the light that shines in my life has some darkness in there that became light. And I'm hoping that it blesses you. But first of all, um, I got some individuals that couldn't come with me tonight. I have a two and a four year old, so you can imagine, you know, what life is like right now, taking over a program and having uh, close to Irish twins. Um, this is my, my family. Our name is the Powell Party of Six, all right? Because I take them to restaurants. We go to restaurants, we have a good time, you know? I actually got a, um, a discount at one restaurant in Valpo. I was really proud of this. And guess what the discount was for? It was 10% off. Ready for this? You ready for this? Well-behaved children. Praise the Lord. Come on. Come on. You know, and I had a little bit to do with that, but uh, this is my point guard right here. That's, that's, that's Mama P, you know? Her nickname is the CEO because she runs the house. Man, we homeschool our kids, and you can imagine what it's like to homeschool four children. I mean, she's amazing. We both grew up in Joliet. We've been married for 18 years now. Um, she's my everything. God really gave me a gift in her. And then I'm going to go through the babies, but I'm going to start with my oldest one. My oldest one, she just turned 13. All right? So I had a lot of changes this year. I turned 40. I got a teenage daughter, and I took over college basketball program. So God help me. Amen? Does anyone have teenage children in here? If you do, raise your hand. For some reason, when they turn 13, there's definitely a change. She's been 13 for like a couple months, and I can see a change in her. It's like, it's interesting. You know, she doesn't run and give me kisses when I get home anymore. But I still got these two to do that. So that's my 13-year-old. That's Bria. She's a volleyball player. That's Liam. Uh, that's my man right there. He's, he's nine. He just now started really getting serious about basketball. So for a former NBA player and a basketball coach, I'm pretty excited about that. And then the two in the middle, this is Angel Gabriel. He has the sweetest personality. Um, my staff and the players on my team, they call him Party. Because whenever music comes on, he just starts bouncing like this, man. You know what I'm saying? Like he has some swag to him. And, and he loves hanging out with the guys. We went to um, a Cubs baseball game. I threw out the first pitch. And uh, afterwards, we, we took the guys out to dinner, rooftop. It was an awesome um, environment. And he literally acted like he didn't know us. You will see, I got a video. He, like, he just left us. He was like, Dad, you guys are cool. I'm with the fellas, you know? And, uh, but they love him. And then, so this is CEO Senior. That's CEO Junior right there, all right? So she's two. And if you ask her, are you the boss? And she says, yes. And she understands what that means, you know? So you can imagine, you know, my little CEO Junior and CEO Senior. I got two bosses in the house, all right? But super thankful. Um, you know, all the things that I've achieved, one of the best things is this right here. Being a man of God, having a wife, having amazing kids, and training these kids up to love the Lord. Like, that by far is my greatest accomplishment. The next one is, next picture is, this is one of the second things that happened, or actually a third or fourth things that happened this year. This happened about a month ago. So when I was uh, in college, God gave me the call to ministry. And um, I got a ministry license, I started preaching, but it took 18 years for me to be ordained. And this happened um, two months ago. And 
kind of, kind of my story, kind of explain why. But, but this happened about two months ago in Spokane, Washington. Um, I was coaching at Gonzaga, and um, I actually started a men's ministry there, and I really got plugged in. And um, so the, the pastors there acknowledged the, the gift of God in my life, and they decided to ordain me. And, and um, praise the Lord for that. Amen. A big, a big thing about the ordination for me is just um, a higher level of accountability and responsibility. And, um, you know, the pastor there, this Pastor Will, he, we have a call every uh, two weeks. And, and he said, now it's time for me to call you up to a high level and a high level of accountability and a high level of consecration to the Lord, because now people are looking at you and God is going to use you, influence people. And not only as a basketball coach, but as a preacher, as a man of God, God is going to use your story, every part of your story, which you're going to hear later, to bless people, to encourage people. Amen? Amen. All right. So first of all, I'm a black preacher. Now I'm a coach. So you can give me feedback. Okay. Actually, you know what? Let's stand up for a second. I like crowd uh, activity. All right. So a couple uh, weeks ago, I was praying, man. And I've been going through Exodus and, and the Lord pointed a scripture to my heart. He was talking about Moses, when he, told, when he told Moses that I'm a jealous God, and he was just like, Moses, I'm jealous for my relationship with you. And, and it really hit me when I read that because I started thinking about all the in- environments that I played basketball in and I've coached in. I've been in national championship games as a coach and a player. You know, I've, I've coached, I played in the NBA, and, and you're in these arenas and you see all these people cheering, and I mean, they're, they're painting their faces. I mean, think about football around here on Sunday, right? You got any Bears fans in here? No. Wasn't, that wasn't the response. I was just, okay. It's okay. It's okay. We're going to make it. All right. Um, Colts fans? Okay. All right. Divided house. All right. That's okay. As long as we can connect with Jesus. How about the Cowboy fans? See, I knew that. I knew if I said Cowboy fans, they are just, they're different, okay? But, but, like, I'm in these arenas, and sometimes as a player and as someone who just is absolutely in love with Jesus, I see these crowds going crazy, and I'm like, man, what about God? Like, like what about what he's done? I mean, like, I was just putting a, bass, a ball in the hoop and, or making a tackle, and, and, and people are just going ballistic over that. But what about Jesus? Like, Jesus literally changed, changed his lives. He, he restores things. He heals people. He... he brings people and families back together. He gives people the ability to overcome addictions and like, why would we cheer for a quarterback more than him? I don't understand that. And, and being someone that my livelihood somewhat depends on athletics, athletics is not number one in my life. Jesus is. So, amen? You can clap. You can clap. Just, I'm just giving you a warning. What's about to happen is going to be fun. So, so what I like to do before I preach and share anything sometimes, and I just feel like this is a place that I can do this in, I want to take about 15 seconds, all right? And, and I want to create an environment in this place to give Jesus the honor and the glory that he deserves. And now that doesn't mean just clapping. You can shout, you can jump, all right? I asked one of the pastors if I started running, would, would that be okay? <laughs> I'm not going to do that because I got to stay between like these like lines right here so they can see me. But if I jump, if I shout, you know what? So be it. Jesus has been good to me. All right. So we're going to do this. When I say one, two, three. All right. I want you to give Jesus. I want you to give him your best shout, your best clap for 15 minutes. All right. And then I'm going to pray and then we're going to get into the word. Is that okay? All right. Now, if we don't do it good enough, I'm a coach. I'm going to make you do it again. I'm just saying, like, you know, we, we go over and over again until the players get it right, all right? So put my coaching hat on right now. All right, so one, two, three. Jesus! Yeah! Praise your name, God! 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 Give him some praise! Give him some glory! Hallelujah! 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 Woo! All right. Now just give me a flex, like, yeah. Hey, man, I like it. All right, you can be seated, man. 
I like you guys. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for an opportunity to honor you and to represent you in your house, Lord, to, to declare your story or my story that you have written um, in the presence of your children, God. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would take over my words. And I pray, Lord, that something I share, something of what you've done in my life will inspire, will encourage, will challenge, you know, someone here. I thank you for the vulnerability that I'm going to um, allow right now by sharing some of my scars and my victories. I pray that it unlocks faith in your people, God. And I pray, God, that they will see your light in, in me and in what you have done through me. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, I got a video for you guys. Check this video out. like final four as a player now as a coach feel me god is good get in here andrew how you feel right now final four ac how you feel right now let's go let's go Jalen. how you feel right now feeling good feeling good praise the lord let's go let's go This next photo here is um, one of those moments when you, uh, you, you get to take a, a, a second, almost like in Psalms, a Selah moment, right? This is the court at the Final Four in Indianapolis, um, I believe it was three years ago. And it was a practice um, that no one could come to because it was during COVID. So it was just you know, our team practicing before we played in that UCLA game that you saw. And I remember walking on the court and just thinking about just, man, being back at the Final Four as a, as a coach now, you know? Um, 16 years prior to that, I played in the National Championship game with the University of Illinois. And, and these are like monumental moments where, where you have to like take a moment and say, wow, God, how did I get here? Um, this, next, this next slide talks about some of the things that took place between the, the 16 years 
um, you know, from playing in a national championship game and, and coaching in the national championship game. And, you know, a, a lot of things happened. Number one, I got to experience walking away from my playing career. So at 28, I walked away from playing professional sports because God told me to. All right, I was in my prime making great money, and I felt like God was saying, it's time for me to step into my calling. So I did that, right, at 28, something that, you know, many people probably have been nervous to do because I was making a lot of money playing and then going to be an assistant at Valparaiso 12 years ago, it was a huge pay cut. So just had my first kid, my wife was like, all right, <laughs> that budget's going to be tighter. And, but we made it. And I got to experience God blessing us and, you know, going from Valpo to Vanderbilt and coaching NBA guys and going to Gonzaga. I mean, these are like monumental things. But one of the things that I've um, learned over the years is, you know, everyone loves to show their trophies. Everyone praises the, the mountaintop moments, those moments where you're successful, those moments where you can say, hey, brother, this is my testimony. I'm winning. We're winning. But one thing that I've been seeing over these last couple of years is people are valuing real and vulnerability. And I want to be real with you guys for a second. Can I be? Is it OK? Can I be vulnerable with you? OK. During those 16 years, there's a lot of successes, but I had a period, man, where I really, really struggled. And when I tell you struggled, as a preacher, everything I said I would never do, I did. Marriage was failing. Had to file bankruptcy, lost some real estate, got fired from my job in Vanderbilt. We had a miscarriage. My marriage struggled. I struggled with purity, okay? I did. I did. I struggled with it. Um, I mean, it was an awful, awful two years in my life during that period when I was at Vanderbilt. And one thing happened during that time. I started to isolate myself. I was still known as the Rev. Social media, Instagram was on point, guys. I mean, everything was wonderful on the outside. But on the inside, I was dying. I was struggling. And I was in a place, guys, when you, when, you, when you have a level of, you know, you have a big name, I guess you would say, whatever, that means nothing now. But when you have people looking at you and you're an athlete or you're a preacher or you're someone of influence, right? You can't show your scars. You have to have this image of perfection. And I battled that. And as I battled that, it was about a two-year period where I just kept going darker and darker and darker and darker. And if anyone's ever experienced that, you have sin in your heart and your life and you're really struggling and you're still going to church, you know, and those long conversations in the hallway become shorter because you don't want to be found out. Like, I experienced that. And the very fact that I'm free enough to talk about it shows that God did something in my heart. Amen? Because I'm seeing that people need to see real. As a leader and as someone who has, I guess, made it, whatever you may call that, when you're able to be vulnerable and when people see vulnerability and they see real brokenness and they see the restoration that comes from it, it unlocks something. It unlocks something in people. This word, uh, vulnerability, is an interesting word because as a man, we never want to be vulnerable. One of the reasons I started the men's ministry in uh, Spokane was because God did something in me. He did something to me. I got in my most vulnerable state, and four years ago was when God pulled me out, but I had no choice. The family that you saw on that, um, that picture, minus one, because I had one since then, I was on the verge of losing. And, and to be honest, if I would have lost that, man, I would have really struggled, guys. I love my family. But yet I couldn't get out of that, the claws that the enemy had me in. I couldn't get out. 
until one day I said enough is enough and I exposed all the darkness in my life. Everything brought it to the light and I ran to Jesus and that light exploded in my heart and that's where I finally felt real strength because I thought I was done. And I remember I was praying by myself. My family was gone during that time where I was going through exposing the light. And, and it's interesting, during that time, I just really felt like God was going to say, okay, you're done, son. The call in your life, you're done. I really felt like that was the, the type of father he was. A father that was so concerned with my performance, I failed, I messed up. Okay, now I have to earn back the love that, that he gave me or the responsibility and the call that he had in my life. And this one moment, this one feeling I had from the Father changed my perception of God for the rest of my life. I was praying. I was like, God, if I lose my family, if I lose everything, I don't want to lose you. I don't want to lose the intimacy with you. Now that I've come clean, now that I've, I've exposed the darkness in my life, I want to have a relationship with you. And, and you know what God spoke to my heart? He said, not only are you not going to lose me, now I can use you. And your wife, her tears are going to be, become shouts of joy. And I'm going to restore everything. And I'm going to use you to do that same thing for others. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 But vulnerability is the key, guys. Vulnerability is the key. It's vulnerable to come to the light. You think about some of the stories in the Bible when, when God would show up and there was light, right? People, people be scared. That sin, light just exposes it. But that light is cleansing. That light is cleansing. As I think about light and I think about scripture, there's so many scriptures that we have, but there are, there are two areas can you go back to that one slide? Go back one if you can. There are two areas that took place when I came to the light and I exposed that darkness. Number one, I had fellowship with the Father. It was restored to a high level. And that fellowship became a dependence, not on my performance, not on my image of what people on the outside thought of me. It became my love for him and my dependence and my gratitude for him to restore me and bring me, put me back together, right? And then the second thing that happened was it led me to a deeper fellowship with other believers. And as a man, we don't do that well, guys. We don't. Because we're men. We're strong. You know, we can figure this thing out on our own. But the body of Christ isn't built that way. We need him and we need each other. And until we're able to walk in light with him, and walk in light with each other, we're vulnerable. But not a good vulnerability. We're vulnerable to being broken and destroying our lives. And I learned that lesson, and I'm so thankful that I did. Check out this verse. It's one of the best verses that explains this concept. It says, it's in 1 John 1. It says, this is the message which we've heard from him and declare to you, that God is light. And in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Those two areas, I can't tell you enough. Fellowship with the father vulnerability with the Father, letting the Father cleanse you. If you're dealing with some type of sin, running to him. Don't run away from him. Don't do what Adam and Eve did in the garden. Run right to him. And then the next thing is run to friends. Run to real Christian friends that will hold you accountable and will help hold you up. And that's the formula for staying in the light. This scripture goes on to say that we're all going to sin. If we say we haven't sinned, we're a liar. We're a liar. All of us have sinned. There's no one perfect. It doesn't matter if you're the highest preacher or the lowest human being on the earth. We all sin and we all need a savior. So if we're going to sin, 
we might as well get true forgiveness by staying in the light and having fellowship. Next slide. Embrace vulnerable friendships in Christ. Basically, get you some friends that won't let you fail. When I talked about being ordained, it's a great honor, and I'm super excited about the call that God has to be set apart. But the best privilege of being ordained is that I have this pastor in Spokane that I talk to every other week, and we have real vulnerable conversation. Vulnerable conversation. And I have to face that call no matter what. And that relationship is strength for me. That relationship is helping me stay strong and not allowing the enemy to grip and divide and get me in isolation again. So I can fight because I have someone fighting with me. Listen to this. Let God Be True commentary talks about Christian friends. This is the beauty of having Christian friends. This is not like an option. This is a necessity. If you want to be all that God has called you to be, if you want to walk in the light, this is a necessity right here. Listen to this. Christians make the best friends. For God alters souls to match. They fear the Lord, believe the truth, adore Jesus Christ, follow Bible wisdom in life, have true love in their hearts, and know they will spend eternity together. They exhort and rebuke each other to perfection, which is sweeter than kisses. The world cannot know such unity. The world cannot know it. That's the beauty of what Jesus Christ did when he built the church. He gave us brothers and sisters that won't let us fail, that will exhort us, that will challenge us, that will do life with us so that we can be all that God has called us to be. And we won't allow Satan's grip to destroy and break apart our families and break apart our lives. Amen? So a couple of scriptures that I think are perfect for this. I love Proverbs, guys. I read Proverbs every day. It says, a man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. He rages against all wise judgment. Proverbs 18.1. I read it yesterday. I love the, I love the passage that talks about the devil prowls, prowls around like a lion, seeking whom he may devour. He does that. But if you think about the way that a lion attacks, he looks for the weak straggler. He doesn't want to attack a pride. He doesn't want to attack a group because he may get stampeded. But he finds that one that lurks by himself, that isolates himself. And then he's like, I got one. The beauty of Proverbs, the wisdom in Proverbs is fight against that. Because when we're together, Satan's grip is not strong. But it's those isolated ones, the ones that allow, that allow themselves to be drawn away that the enemy is looking for. Think about the strength you have when you stay united and you embrace vulnerability with Christian friends. Proverbs 27, 17 says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And I love the Amplified version because it says, sharpens and influences another through discussion. That light isn't just all the ups. My scars are in that too. My failures are in that too. And now on the other side of it, there's no shame. There's no guilt because I have an assignment to do and I'm stronger than ever. And now as his head coach, it's my job to shine a light. So check out this video, it lasts four months. responsibility as a man of God and a leader, a man of faith, is to shine a light. And how fitting is it to be a beacon that I want our community, our city, our state, the surrounding states, the nation, I want them to see our light. It's time for us to shine our light and that light is going to impact change in people. It's going to be inspirational. So I want you guys to remember when I said I'm a beacon, 
that means that light is going to shine bright. So beacon up, shine your light, let's get to work. Thank you guys. as someone who has made it, as someone who has broke through a barrier, he's given me a responsibility to do the same thing, break barriers for others. So here I am. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm stronger than ever. I've been broken, but I've been put back together. And in that, I'm not afraid to show my scars, but I'm even more passionate about shining the light. And that light is vulnerability. That light is relationship. It's friendship. And my challenge to you guys is this. Number one, run to the light. Whatever you're dealing with, maybe there's somebody in here that is right in the same place I was. God is faithful. He's able. He will not let you fail. Run to him. Don't run from him. He has enough power to help you break anything you're struggling with. He will do that. Trust me. He will do it. Next one is fight the urge to isolate. No matter how bad you feel or how hard it is, fight that urge. The enemy wants you to isolate. He wants you to stay by yourself. Don't do it. There's power in community. There's power in community. And then next, be vulnerable in friendships. Be vulnerable in friendships in Christ. Don't just have the surface relationships. That's not how we've been built. We've been built for vulnerability and strong relationships. So let's do it. Depend on him daily. Every day. I don't miss a day. I stay in that word. I pray. I bring everything to Jesus. And I get my strength to go live another day and to fight another day. And then the last thing is tell your story. Tell your whole story, though. I believe God's going to do something in many of you from this. I believe God is unlocking something in you right now. And whatever you've been through, whatever you dealt with, Jesus is able to deliver. And when he does, Share it because someone needs to hear it. Someone needs to hear it. And when you share what Jesus has done in your life, everything, you're going to unlock something in somebody else. Romans 8, 28 says, all things work together for good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. All things. I read that when I was 20 and I said, oh, I know what that means. But then when I went through some mess and God pulled me out, then that word became alive in my heart. So now I can say that knowing that, yes, all things work together for good. So trust in him. Trust in his word. Don't let the enemy convince you that you can't make it. He will deliver you and be strong. Be strong together. Amen. Amen. Did you guys get something from this? Yeah. Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you so much for what you've done for me, God, and how you've brought me together. You put me together. I thank you for 
the down times, the brokenness. I thank you for the vulnerability, God. And I thank you that I can just share with your people, Lord, of your goodness and how you're able to deliver. So, Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that whoever is in this room, God, whoever's struggling with any type of thing, Lord God, whoever is fighting that urge to be isolated, right now I pray that you break the enemy's strength, break the enemy's grip, and flood and invade their hearts with light. And Father, I pray that you would begin to bring stronger relationships that everyone will hold each other accountable and challenge each other to be all that God has called them to be. Keep families together. Keep, keep people strong for your kingdom, God. And I thank you for the light that's going to shine forth from this church and this community. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you've enjoyed hearing from Coach Powell from Valparaiso University Men's Basketball. I know I got a lot out of his message this week. Listen, if you want to be a part of making a difference in Northwest Indiana, head to suncrest.org where you can learn all about the amazing things that are coming up on our calendar from meal box packing for Thanksgiving, from meal packing at Christmas time, from donating socks and underwear, 50,000 pairs of those throughout the rest of this year. Listen, I want you to be a part of it. So head to suncrest.org to learn all the details on how you can be a part of making a difference in Northwest Indiana.
Every week we pause everything we do both in person and on demand to focus on the love of Jesus through a time we call communion. It's where in person we take bread and juice, but on demand go ahead and find whatever food and drink you have available to you to represent Jesus's body and his blood that was broken and poured out for each of us so that we might know what real love and real life can look like. If you're going to participate in that, I'm going to put a timer and some scripture on the screen here shortly, and you can feel free to eat and drink whenever you are ready. For those of us who are watching, and I'm glad you're watching, uh, if you would not define yourself as someone who follows Jesus, I'm really glad you're here because Suncrest is an amazing and safe environment for you to explore what it is you believe alongside hundreds and thousands of other people who are doing the exact same thing. So. I'm going to put that timer and that scripture up, and I want to invite all of us to reflect together. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you know someone who needs to watch this, go ahead and hit the share button. And if you want to see more content like this from Suncrest Church, hit subscribe on our YouTube channel. Now, next week, we're doing what we're calling a vision weekend, where our lead pastor, Greg, is going to plot the course for what it looks like for Suncrest to make an impact over the next season of our church's existence in Northwest Indiana. So I hope you'll tune in for that. I hope that you'll be inspired by that. And I hope ultimately that you grow to experience the change that comes from following Jesus. We'll see you next time.